Hello everyone, my name is Chuck Sariscapades and I do a lot of landscaping and gardening in my backyard. I live in the suburbs in the inner city and as you can hear, there's some trucks roaring around in the freeway next to our house. And as you know, it can be quite more expensive living in the inner city as opposed to living further away. And it also means that landscaping can be a costly venture depending on how you go about it. Based on my experience landscaping for the past two years in the inner city, Here's a few tips to help you with your landscaping endeavors. So let's start. Number one, make use of buy and sell groups, websites, pages, whatever, to find things free or cheap. I get most of my materials this way. I've gotten lots of rocks which, I, which I'm using for my borders. I also picked up a carload of white pebbles and I've been using them everywhere in my garden. And quite recently in my episode 63 of Let's Plant, I picked up some tree stumps and I've been using them in my landscape. And some things that you would want to look out for are pebbles, large rocks, a bunch of bricks, maybe some pavers, and even some stands or shelves, whatever you use. And apart from that, I get to score lots of pots as well. I see people listing a bunch of plastic pots for free all of the time. And this has been quite useful when I move plants into pots between landscaping. So it really helps having those extra stuff on hand. That way you don't have to spend on any of them. Number two, buy in bulk from garden and landscape supply centers. And this is actually how I found out about Soilworks. Now depending on your supplier of choice, you'd be getting a great deal from buying in bulk and there might be additional avenues to save if you're having them delivered or if you're picking them up yourself. And if buying in bulk is too much for you, you could always split with a friend or a few friends. And if you work it out amongst yourselves, you'll be saving a lot in the long run. Number three, keep a lookout for people who are doing their house or garden because chances are they would be pricing things really cheap or even free especially if they want to get rid of things ASAP number four check out garage sales no two are the same and you'll never know what you'll find and for number five if your local council has a spring cleaning drive you might find some gems just by driving around your neighborhood we picked up a lot of stuff this way and for some bonus tips here's Kai over to you man Hello all, thanks Chuck. So you're looking at doing a building project and you need some lumber. Well, that's great because I know a little bit about doing that. As a home builder and a minimalist, I'm always looking for free or heavily discounted materials. And there are three ways that I have used consistently that I have a very high success rate with. The first one, piggybacking on what Chuck just said, is actually going to neighborhoods and new homes that are under construction. You'll often see big piles of discarded scrap wood sitting out in front of the house. Now you'll notice these piles as they're framing the home. And the key thing here is to not go and try to pick through the pile or even ask the crew while the framing process is going on. What happens is a lot of times the framers will go back and forth between the pile and the home using old pieces of scrap wood to build or to use during the uh, framing process. The key is, is to go after the framing. And you can typically tell when they're done or about to wrap up the framing is when you see windows, doors, and the roof being installed. And typically when I see that, I'll usually go to the crew at the end of the work day, not during, but at the end of the work day as they're packing up their trucks to see if I can pull a couple of pieces of wood out of the pile. Number two is getting wooden pallets and crates from industrial distribution centers and dumpsters. Now this is a pretty common thing that a lot of folks are already doing. And really, honestly, what has worked out really well for me is I drive through the industrial area of town a lot or distribution centers, specifically produce, products, manufacturers, that type of stuff where they're shipping big stuff on crates. And what I found is to get free pallets and crates, it's usually I don't go to the bigger operations. They usually have a lot of restrictions and regulations about how they deal with that stuff. I found that if you go to the more of the local distributors and the local industrial places like Metal Workshop, they're a lot more willing and eager to give away that stuff to locals. Typically on crates and on pallets, you'll see a stamp on there. And a stamp is usually one of three symbols. Now here's a very important thing, especially when using this for your garden or using it inside your home. There's three different ways that companies treat these wood pallets and crates. So the three stamps that we're looking for is HT, which stands for heat treated, those are safe. Number two is KD, which stands for kiln dried, which is safe. And the third one is MB, which stands for methyl bromide fumigation. And that just 
doesn't even sound safe and it is not safe. So I stay away from that at all costs. The other two, HT and KD, are perfectly safe and I use those all the time. The MV, I don't even touch. And the number three is Home Depot or any type of large local hardware store. And they actually will sometimes even have pallets there too for you to take. With that said, you can get pallets there, but a lot of times it can be hit or miss. But it never hurts to ask. But the key thing about Home Depot that's great is that after building this whole house and going through actual lumber yards and things of that sort, is that Home Depot actually has really decent prices on their lumber products. But with that aside, is that in the back of the store, usually near the saws where they use to cut down the lumber, is that you'll find a bin that will have pieces of wood that is marked with a purple dot. This bin, all that wood are usually scrap pieces of wood or woods that been or wood that has been damaged or for whatever reason isn't really fit to sell at retail prices. These are discounted between 70 and 90% off. This is a great place to build or use any of your for your projects. If you can see right back here, those two floating shelves, those are two by tens that I got from the clearance pile. Okay, and those are the three tips that I have for you today. Good luck on your next project and let Chuck and I know how these tips worked out for you. Were you able to get any free good stuff? Back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Guy. For more tips on minimalism and all that, check out Kai's channel. The link to his channel for 24K Life would be somewhere around here or down in the description below. Now, if this is your first time meeting me, my name is Kai and I'm just an average guy who is able to retire at 27 on a minimalist lifestyle and build my own home overlooking the lake. And I'll spend most of my time traveling, building stuff, surfing, and making YouTube videos. Come check out my channel and subscribe to 24K Life right here. If you're at all interested in seeing the habits and techniques that could help you towards early retirement. And if you're after more succulent related tips, just stick around in my channel or click around in the videos down below or in these cards. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.